to the Festival of Storytellers. can't tell you how excited I am to be on right now. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks of, of excitement, uh, getting prepared, and I've done a lot of things in my life, but this has got to be close to the top. Thank you, Regis Magnet, and thank you, John, for um, putting this forth and taking the chance on our authors in, in, uh, in presenting this out to, to the world. I've, I've enjoyed this immensely, Joanne. Ellie, so have I. Thank you for, for who you are, and thank you, Reader's Magnet. You all are beautiful, and you've worked so very hard, and we are blessed. We, we are. are. I thank everybody that's involved with this process because we know writers need readers and writers need publishers. We thank Readers Magnet and everybody that's involved. I love Readers Magnet. They say, we share your stories with the world. everyone. I am Nisi. I am your moderator for this segment of the Festival of Storytellers. I have the pleasure of interviewing the author of the hour, Dr. Dorothy Travis Moore. And I'd like to say that I am so excited for this opportunity to speak with her. I have been knowing her for a very, very long time. She is such a wonderful person. And it, I have so many adjectives to describe her. We really don't have enough time. But this is a true story. A few years ago, I did a feature article for her for a newspaper that I was a newspaper project that I was working on. And I would just love to share just a portion of that interview, which mm -hmm. made the back cover of her book. Yes. Isn't that great? So without further ado, I'm going to read the port a, a small portion of the article. Dorothy Travis Moore broke the glass ceiling to become the first woman to establish a Christian-centered private African-American school exclusively for adolescent boys in urban Milwaukee. History was indeed made, not because Dr. Moore wanted her place in historical archives, but because she wanted the paradigm shift in yes. children's lives. Yeah. Many awards, certificates, and pictures adorn her office. Dr. Travis Moore is an accomplished woman who knows higher education is the gateway to changing the future of children who would otherwise would not survive. 
Dr. Travis Moore talks from an instructional, practical, and spiritual perspective for anyone in education to glean from. This academician has been a Milwaukee fixture for many years. Highly respected and well-spoken, Dr. Travis Moore was challenged in her own youth by her mother to make a difference. And by God's grace, yeah. she did. Dr. Moore, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. And thank Good you afternoon. so much for sharing that. Wow, how I remember and I'm so grateful that you are a part. Um, that book would have not been completed without you. Thank you so oh, much no, for sharing you. that part from the back of the cover. Thank you, thank you. It was my privilege, honor, and pleasure. Well, Dr. Moore, thank you for allowing me to share this virtual stage with you. And please tell our viewers a little bit about your background. Well, you know, thank you again so much here for, and, and I'm just looking forward to sharing this time with you. Uh, when I think of the book in that background, as you mentioned it, it, it started with, with my mother. Little did I know that um, I was going to create a school and name it after her because growing up, we would, there was a playground near us. And my mm -hmm. mother would come home sometime tired from the playground and she would look for one of the little boys that were playing in the playground. And if one was missing and somebody would say, well, for example, where's Anthony? And they would say, oh, Anthony got in trouble. He went to juvenile detention. And my mother would be, oh, my God, he has so much potential. And uh, we could be at a church function or anywhere. And they would say, mm -hmm. are there any announcements? And my mother would do things like, well, yes, there's a little boy in detention. I'm just wondering if one of the men could go and talk to him because he's a good little boy. And she always said that it's the men who are the leaders in our family. And so I would be like, oh God, here goes mom again, talking about helping some boys in the community. And what happened? Uh, she passed away in 1986. Mm -hmm. And 10 years later, I opened a school, it was an all boys school when we first started out and I named it after her. Oh, wow. What a tribute and an honor to your mom. Well, you mentioned your mother. Explain how did she ex ex influence your book? Well, she influenced the book because all of the work that she was doing with young people, and I began to start the school, and I looked for the at-risk child. Because my mother said, hey, there are a lot of helpers out here for children who are doing good. Uh, but when we look at a child who's in detention, said many times they're already thinking, prognosis is poor, let's write him off. But that wasn't my mom. And over time, as I went to school and began to work myself, uh, first of all, I need to tell you that I was not going to go in education. I share that story in my book too. I'm like, I'll do anything else but go in education. But as God would have it, I remember clearly the day I was teaching Sunday school and a lady came and said, you need to be teaching high school. And I said, well, are you for real? She said, yes. I said, mm -mm, no, 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 not me. But the more and more we talked, she was an assistant superintendent in one of the school districts in California where I first began my educational journey. And over time, I took a position and I worked with all boys. Can you believe that? in a classroom called the Educationally Handicapped. And I kept remembering my mother saying, there's hope for them, there's hope for them. And the more I poured my heart into them, the more I realized that there was so much goodness. And I began to see them change and develop into um, some good young men. And many have gone on to do successful things. So she influenced me way back in the beginning. And then when I, my career took many turns from New Orleans to overseas in Italy and finally ending up in Milwaukee. And I said, okay, the time is now. Because when I was working in Milwaukee public schools and I did that mm -hmm. for 17 years, there were children who came to school 
who honestly, when they were in the classroom, the teachers couldn't teach and the rest of them could not learn. But I didn't want, we didn't want to throw them away. And I had a heart for them. So I started the school. One interesting little thing too, in fact, when I left Milwaukee Public Schools and I told them that I was starting my own school and they were like, oh no, don't go. You know, we need you here. And after a long conversation, they discovered that it was my mission. And if you please, it was my ministry. So they said, okay, you're gonna go, but look, take this one with you and take this one and take this one. All the boys who were the troublemaker that I work with and uh, four of them did come with me when I first started the school. So that was my mom's whole influence there. Wow, wow. You know, as you speak, your passion just comes through. Okay. And it is such a wonderful testament to your mother that you were able to carry on her legacy through educating children that society just throws away. Yes. And I have to say, my hat goes off to you, Dr. Moore. Thank you so much for all that you have done in this educational community. Thank you. As, as we like to say in, in the uh, business, mm -hmm. this isn't your first rodeo. And I know that you have authored other books. Tell us about that. Well, you know what? Thank you very much. My first book, because I used to enjoy the theater and in school, I was in forensics and the drama club. So my very first book was, oh my God, 45 years ago, I wrote the first book, The Light Book of Soul Script. And it was a book of plays. And in fact, the featured play in the book is called A Crying Shame. And it talks about our life, my mother's life with four children and my brother had some difficulties. And it said then that it really uh, took the death of a mother for a young man in that story to come to the realization that he could be something. So that was a book of plays. The next thing, when my mother passed away, mm -hmm. there, were, um, there were people who would come to me and say, you know, your mother helped me. She told me this story. She did this. She did that. And I wrote the next book called Wisdom from Above. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. Then after that, I wrote Where's the Caring God When I Need Him. Then I had a son. I have a son who is my uh, great nephew, but I have the privilege of adopting him. And mm -hmm. I wrote a book called uh, I Have Prayed for You. He was struggling in school and he said, I am not going to make it. And I looked him in the face and I said, oh, no, you're going to make it. In fact, why? Because I have prayed for you. And then when you make it, I want you to strengthen another boy, another girl in your class. And so I wrote that little book and then it just continued. So I think this is number seven. Yeah, this book is number seven. <laughs> yes. Wow. 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 On a scale from one to 10, how would you rate your latest masterpiece oh this this one is by far this one this one is this, this this is it here because also you know that before this one i had um the passion to educate and so basically um the new book is just moving students from potential to performance but this one includes some things after the pandemic and of course after the pandemic i moved to the mid-south here and I got a chance to see still some of the issues that are in education and some of the things that we continually need to work on. And I know now after this, after this pandemic, I mean, who knows five years from now, how it's going to affect our children. And so in this book, I have included um, some questions. I have included more tips on how to move students from potential to performance. And so I really believe that for all of those who take a look at it, this is going to be a real blessing. So yeah, on a scale of one to 10, 
this one is for sure a 10. I do believe. <laughs> well, I am in agreement with you. I think it's a 10 as well. <laughs> so let's go, let's dig a little deeper. Uh huh. Why did you write moving students from potential to performance? What was the motivation behind that? I think as an educator and loving children and believing in them, I came to the realization that there were many adults who walked the hallways of schools who really did not believe in them, who really did not care about them. And I just had a burden to just share with people is that if you would take the time not to be like society and to write them off, but to believe in them, to care about what's happening in their lives, that you can make a change. And so therefore in the book, what you're gonna have is not just me talking, you're gonna have me telling stories. I, I love to tell stories, I, I love to tell them. And so I am telling the stories of many of the children uh, in the book. I think I've shared a couple of times, but let, 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 let me share this, this one story. Okay. There was a young man and his mother was what, what they used to call mentally retarded. They don't use that term anymore. It's called cognitive dissonance. And she had three boys who were not in school. A member of our church came to me and said, Dorothy, these boys need to come to your school. And I went by that home and what a sad, sad situation. Mm -hmm. So we enrolled the boys in school, began to help the family with their many needs. And then the mother died because she tried to give herself a tattoo and got blood poison. Her son was 17 years old. That's the oldest one mm -hmm. reading at a fourth grade level. And he came to me one day and he said, I need a job. Can you please help me get a job? Because the courts have given us over to our grandmother. And you see, that's a whole nother issue. Mm -hmm. Three teenage boys and there's nobody to take care of them except an 85 year old grandmother. So this boy was saying, I need a job. And I said, honey, I'm gonna try and help you find a job. But before I could do that, the next week, he was caught for distributing drugs near school mm -hmm. and went to jail. First time ever in trouble. And I believed in this child. And I could have stayed at school, but I took the time to go to court to be with him. I even brought a prayer warrior with me. And I said, I need you to be praying while I talk. And the judge mm -hmm. talked to me. And I poured my heart in the educational system and how we work with young people. And that judge listened to me. And the judge said, basically, you've done wrong to the, for this young man. He said, we could really give you 15 years, basically. He said, but I'm going to turn you over to your administrator. And if you can come back here in six months and you have improved, we'll wipe the slate clean. That's what I'm talking about trying to intervene in the lives of young people. He had never gone to jail before. The system was about to really pull him into mm -hmm. his clutches, the way they do so many young people who don't get a chance to realize how they can perform as citizens. And so that's why I wrote the book, to tell those kind of stories. Don't get me started. You know, I just kind of talk on and on. And You're on. fine. Um, because this is a reality working with our children, believing in them, and not just saying they're part of the status quo and they'll ma never make it. Oh my goodness, I have too many success stories. That's why it's in the book. Wow, wow. Well, you know, I have to commend you once again because you went above and beyond in this case. I have never heard of an administrator, a teacher going to court on the behalf of a student to keep him out of a system that would, could potentially yes. ruin his entire life. 
Yes, yes. That is a powerful, powerful story, Dr. Yes. Moore. I am in awe. I am just in awe. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Yes. When you were writing the book, did you consider other titles for the book? You know, I did, okay? Because when I first started to write the book, I was journaling. I was doing daily logs of what was happening um, in, in, in my school. And like I said, it, it, it hit me when I was teaching, but it became a strong, how do you go, a strong emphasis in my spirit that I had to do it when I became an administrator. And I became my first administrative position was to be the leader of an alternative school in Milwaukee. Guys were coming to us. They were gang members. They were murderers. They had done 10 and, and, and 15 years, if you can believe it almost, in prison and coming out of that. And as a condition of their probation or their parole, they had to come through our school. And, and many of them were carrying guns because they were still in the same community and they were wanting to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. And so we had to scan them. And I thought that's such an inhumane thing. So I came up with the system of scanning for love, scanning with love. And we, redrew, we reduced the number of guns that were being brought like down to zero. And so the first title of the book, I thought from violence to victory, because you know, we can, if we work hard, we can stop and reduce the number of guns that kids are bringing to school. Then after that, other things began to happen, children going through problems. I thought, well, maybe we'll just call it one Midwestern story. Then I looked and I thought, no, it's not about the Midwest. I want to include what happened in mm -hmm. Aviano, Italy, because I worked mm -hmm. with children who were military children, but they had a need. Then I worked in Sacramento, California. And now, of course, I'm in the Mid-South. Uh, so there were a number of other titles. And finally, the last one, I thought, what is it that I truly want to do? I want helpers, Sunday school teachers. I want youth workers. I want parents and anybody to know that your child, God gave them a potential. They have a skill. They have a talent. They have a worth in this world. But we want to move them from that potential to being performing individuals. Yes. So that's how we got to that point. <laughs> oh, wow. 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 Interesting. That's an interesting perspective <laughs> on how you changed the title, how it went from yes. Yes. one title to the next. And now we're at moving students from potential to performance. But I got to interject something right here. I did not take as long as you did with coming up with your title. I know your last book, My Prayer Is. Uh, wow, you got help from a lot of people and you went around because, uh, you know, as we said earlier, we've known each other a long time and I participated in that. And I was like, yes. come on, Nisi, just get a title. Yes, yes. <laughs> I bless you, though, and I'm so grateful for that. Yes. Oh my goodness, yes, yes. I finally settled out on my prayer is, and yes, so I, I can relate, okay? <laughs> I can relate with everything that you just said. So tell, so tell us, how did this impact your family and your loved ones? Uh, you know what, my children were really um, supportive, uh, you know, and my husband, because it took time to write the book, to, as you know, to edit it. We mm -hmm. were coming from the mid from Wisconsin, even to where you are now in the Detroit area. And that took a lot of time and energy. But uh, particularly my daughter and son, who are both educators, they knew the value of it. And they were pushing me, go ahead on, mom, finish the book, finish the book. So that was a big encouragement to me, yes. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yes. Well, uh -huh. what do you want your readers to feel after they read your book? 
you know, there are a lot of things that I want them to feel. But one of them, of course, is I want them to empathize with what's going on in the lives of so many children um, that you don't see, that you don't know about. And when you come in contact with them, uh, there can be sometime an initial shock of the the poverty level, uh, mm -hmm. homelessness, uh, the family abuse, all of those things can really throw you for a loop. But I want you to just kind of, I want the readers to learn to just kind of take a breath mm -hmm. and know that with the help of God, we can impact them. I never shall forget, uh, there was a young man I was helping and he was struggling and he missed the bus and I took him home. And when I took him home, I could not believe what that situation was like. I mean, it affected me so much that I could hardly eat my dinner. There was all of those children there. There was one mattress in this one room and no chairs. And I'm thinking, they are living like this. And this little boy gets up every day and makes it to school. So after I got through that initial shock, then I said, okay, God, how can I help? How can I be a blessing? So that's what I want readers to know. First of all, let's empathize. Then let's roll up our sleeves and know however great, however small, is that we can do our part to help young people who are struggling learners. Um, and some of us are called to do more. There are some things that, um, that I share from time to time. Some are in the book, but it's, uh, I have so many because I've been in education now. Wow, this is a little over 45 years total. Long time, long time. So I got a lot of stories, but I would not expect you to do some of the things that I have done. But I am, am hoping that you want to impact the lives of children. And when you want to do that with the help of God, you can make a difference. Yes, that's what I want them to know. Well, Dr. Moore, could you elaborate just a little bit on how this book impacted you personally? You know, I shared one story, and maybe some have not uh, heard this one, but I know when children come back to me and say, thank you, okay, to say you have been a blessing. And even now, my daughter was saying, Mom, look, there's a young man that we didn't think was going to do very well. We pushed him. He got a high school diploma. He's one of the top managers in a food chain now. And he got married, got married to one of the girls that were at our school also. And um, he's showing off his family now what his children are doing. And he sent just a little thank you note. That's the kind of thing. And here's the one story that I shared. And I shared over and over again because I never get tired of hearing it. There was a young man who was like in a foster placement, so to speak, and struggled, helped him to graduate, helped him to even get married. Uh, in fact, he came to us as a middle schooler. And then he, we worked closely with him, the small settings. He went to high school. High school called us his freshman year and said, could you all start a high school? Because he did well in that small setting, but we're going to lose him and we don't want to lose him. And we started the high school. Long and short of it, he graduated that summer. I'm at African World Festival in Milwaukee on Lake Michigan having a good time. It's about 11 o'clock at night. I'm with my sister and my phone rang. And it is this young man. And I'm like, hello? And I said, what are you doing calling me this time of night? He says, I'm in New Jersey. I said, New Jersey? He said, yes, I joined the army. I finished ba basic training and I'm about to ship out to Afghanistan. And then he paused and he said to me, and I wanted to call you because just in case I don't make it back, I want you to know that you made a difference in my life. And I never would be the man that I am had it not been for you. That's all. That, 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 that's all I need. I don't need a, a bunch of anything. I just need people to know that they can do it and then to hear that they, they're doing it. That is what is best for me. Yes. 
Well, you have had a lot of success stories. <laughs> and if you, if I was to ask you, just off the top of your head, mm -hmm. how many success stories do you recall? Just a number, oh. just throw whatever number you. Thousands. Because you see, we started out with one school mm -hmm. and we went to two schools and to three schools. And then we had a population of a thousand students at that time. So our school was in existence uh, before I sort of retired or moved mm -hmm. into the pandemic state. And we uh, collaborated with another school and our doors were closed. 20 years we held that. So for 20 years times X number of students, now, you know, it's not 100%. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. It is not 100%. In fact, some students will make the decision not to move from potential to performance. And I am just as honest with them as I am with the others. I can remember telling a group of boys that I had worked mm -hmm. with for a while, look here, don't you think I don't know what you're doing? I will call the police help them handcuff you and put you off to jail. And then I will cry crocodile tears that you made the wrong decision. So I've had some to go down that path. I've mm -hmm. had some to go and then I've communicated with them while they're doing time in jail. But I'm grateful for the thousands, and I do mean thousands, that are successful. I still get requests for transcripts. Those who are now 30, going back to college, going to nurse. Oh, nursing school is really like a popular thing now. Many of our students who graduated are now, um, one is signing up for nursing school and are calling me and uh, emailing me for transcripts. And I, don't not, I not only send them their transcript, but I send them an encouragement letter, letting them know, hey, you can do it. I'll send a note, I'm in your corner. Let me know when you finish. Okay. Yes. <laughs> but I, I I could not give you a number except thousands. Thousands, I believe, have been blessed. Well, you know what, Dr. Moore? If you had only blessed one, uh -huh. it's more than some people uh -huh. care to even do. So once again, it is a this is amazing. Um, I'm sitting here listening at you tell the stories and and even when we worked on the book together, yes, some yes. of them started to uh, come back to my remembrance. Yes, yes, and yes. I know that educators would definitely benefit from your book because you have covered it all from elementary all the way to high school. Yeah. And let me be transparent here right now, because when you said you remembered some of those, you couldn't remember when we were working on the book and I came to you so that we could edit. There were times I had to pause because so much came back in the life of what we were doing. Um, you know, I and, and I sent some of those parents kind of a, a, the link even to this Zoom. But I can remember uh, thinking, I remember one time we were doing a story and I thought about that family and how the sheriff came and was putting them out. And by the grace of God, I just happened to have a little money in my pocket at the time and was able to go over there and save them and rescue them from being evicted. That's only by the grace of God. And I am humble. Don't get it. Don't, I don't want anybody to misunderstand. You know, I, I wrote this book, but it is to say that any of us can be a blessing to others if we allow God to use us. And we don't get the credit. We don't get the credit. It's by the grace of God. It's what we're put here to do, to do our duties and fulfill our responsibility to an awesome God, because he gets the glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can well, remember sitting with you and having to pause because the stories were so real and they were coming back to me. And I can remember crying with many 
of my parents and children uh, through difficulties. Some of the difficulties we made it through, some of them went the other way. But by the grace of God, you know, uh, we are all still here. Yes. Well, I would like to say that I totally agree. It is God. Without God, none of this would be possible. Yes, yes. Well, let me ask you this. If you write a story about this for the first time, what? How did you feel when you when you first made your first notes about it? When I made my first notes about the, about the book, yes. Um, I think I was just really writing for documentation purposes in the beginning. My very first notes, because I was mm -hmm. I was encountering situations. And through those situations, how God blessed us, mm -hmm. I just wanted to make some make some notes about those. And then the more notes I got, the more I thought, perhaps this is worthy of someone else to read. And that's what that's what I did. Yeah, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, if you could write a note to your reader, what would it say? If I could write a little note to my readers, uh, I would say perhaps, uh, dear readers, I hope that you will pick up a copy of my book. It is loaded with many stories, real life stories that can bless you, that can encourage you, that can inspire you and lift you up because in life, we're going to have many difficulties and many obstacles. But if we keep the faith, we're gonna make it through. And I would just like to invite you to pick up a copy, share one with a friend if you like, and let them be blessed. Uh, because I have been blessed, first of all, by the children that God has allowed me to serve. I've been blessed. And then I will let them know I've been blessed by the families that I've worked with. And I've been blessed by the communities I have served. And so I just want to share that with each of you. Thank you. <laughs> well, wonderful. Now let me ask you this. Can you briefly tell us how has the pandemic affected education. You know what? I got to tell you something here. Someone just sent over a message from someone who is writing. I don't know who they are, but thank God it is saying, what a great message, Dr. Moore. Even though I already graduated, I still get in touch with my instructors and thank them for their effort. Whoever you are, mwah, God bless you. <laughs> And you continue to be a blessing to other. Wow, thank you so much. Yes. Now, I'm sorry, what was your question? But I just had to get that in. Yes. Oh, that, that's okay. I was asking about how did the pandemic affect, how does the pandemic affect education now? How does, how did it change from that uh, a couple of years ago? Yes, indeed. You know what? I wish I knew completely the answer, but the reality is that there are some changes. We are beginning now to see that was last year when some children came to um, the traditional classrooms. And of course, some school districts did not, did not allow that. They were completely virtual. So you had children at home. They were missing the socialization. Uh, they were missing the instructions that their classroom teachers could provide. And so there were a lot of things missed during that pandemic. And now we are coming together, trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together. But there are some missing pieces and we're gonna have to work hard to find them and to put them together. What do I mean by that? Mm -hmm. Mental health, 
I see it already beginning to affect children. So we're gonna have to put some things in places to help them. Families who struggle, we're gonna have to put some things in places to help them. And the complete effect of it, I don't know when we will see that, but I know it's going to come more and more. So we have been affected by the pandemic and what, because it's so new to all of us, mm -hmm. we simply have to band together, come together with solution and knowing that with all of us working together, we will overcome this. We will handle the issues, the struggles, the problems as they come. All we need to do is to be mm -hmm. hopeful and have faith in God. Yes. Well, amen to that. Um, well, Dr. Moore. Yes. I know that you are still in the educational system mm -hmm. temporarily. Yes. And what has been your assessment, your personal assessment of how students' behaviors have changed during this pandemic? I don't think the behaviors have changed any. I think the students who were, you know, basically uh, doing okay uh, are, con are continuing to try to find ways uh, to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. I think students who were struggling may be continuously struggling uh, along those lines. I guess if I could say that some of the things here, and I can go from like some of the personal stories. I have mm -hmm. a little niece who is uh, a junior and missed all of her sophomore year. So if there's any uh, uh, change, one of them I would mm -hmm. say is that how anxiety, it was just plaguing her as she began to start the school year off, getting back into setting, um, being a student and a teenager is tough enough, but then to be thrown out of the loop where you don't have to deal with any of that, and then to come back into it, wow, the anxiety was super high and trying to help her to deal with that. So I can say that that's one of the changes there, uh, you know, that has occurred. And there are many other things related to the pandemic that we are going to have to face. But here's a, here's a reality. And that reality is that the needs of students are still there. The things that I wrote about for 20 years ago, some of those same issues still ish, are, are there for teachers, how they interact with each other, how they work together. Some of those same issues are there with teachers trying to get parental involvement going in the community and in the school, those same issues are there. And we still struggle with finding ways. But you know what? We continue. We continue to believe that uh, little by little, we're going to overcome whatever the problem is. Take it one problem at a time. Yeah. Well, I have another question for you. Okay. What do you think differentiates your book from other books in that same category or genre? I think what this, uh, uh, you know, distinguish my book from other books is that it is stories being told. It is real life. I did not make up anything. It is stuff that when you read it, it could send a chill, you know, down your spine because it's real. And I want people to know that you can make a difference. You can work with the child. Uh, well, you know, the first time I faced a young man who had been involved in murder, I, I, I was like, wow, can I do this? And so I want people to know that, yes, you can. I want them to really know that each child does have potential. And I want them to see through my book how they move from potential to performance. And the other thing is that I think that some of the tips I put in my book mm -hmm. are actual things that, that 
a parent can start to do uh, with the child. Uh, instead of, of, of um, you know, getting on them about the negative, the negative, and, and, and I don't want to hear it, sometimes we need to pause and let the Holy Spirit guide you. You may need to listen to that story. You may need to hear what's going on up at that school, okay? Uh, things that, that parents are afraid to do, like, oh, I don't want to, you know, my child is struggling, but ooh, I think that something may be going on. I want to look in his book bag. My tips talk about trusting God and going mm -hmm. in on because to ignore it could mean your child could be in a lot more trouble later on. So take that deep breath. Go it on, look through it, and face it with that child. Talk about it, work through it, and see the good in your child. You got to work with them sometimes, but see the good in your child. Not always the punishment, but come up with ways, solutions to solve the problem. So that's what I'm hoping that, uh, and that's what it's kind of like. Uh, I believe that my book is different from some of the others. <laughs> well, okay. Oh my God, I've, got, I've got another one here. Oh my God. And this is from, yeah, from Milwaukee. This says here from Adrian Hunter. Yeah. I've been blessed by your mentorship and life experiences, Dr. Moore. You have been an inspiration to my entire family. Bless you. Mm. By the grace of God, we do what we do. And I thank him so much. Well, thank you so much for sharing. But I had to get that in, Nisi, also. Yes. That's that's okay. That's okay. Um, it is just wonderful that some of your students are watching and they're letting everybody know the impact that you had on them. And I see it as a blessing as well. Is Now, I want to ask you this question. Is your book advocating for a specific cause or agenda? Um, yes and no. <laughs> How about that? Yes, okay. yes and no. Uh, I'm telling a story mm -hmm. and I am asking people to let their hearts be their guide. I'm asking them as they go through the book, if they identify with something, if they if, if, if it uh, spurs a need that's going on in your community or in your school, and this is like the aha moment, I need to do something about it, then go ahead on and do it. So that's kind of like the the no part. That's what I'm just I'm just doing it even key. But the yes part is that I want our society to take off the blinders, and I'm advocating for that. All children can learn. The gifted one, the not so gifted one. And God has strategically, I believe, placed people to work with each group. So if you're the one that's working with the gifted and the talented, give them your all. And if you're the one that's working with the struggling learner, give them your all. So that's what I'm advocating for. Wow. Wow. That is such an amazing, again, an amazing testament to how you are so passionate and how you love what you do. And if we just had just a hundred of you, I'll start small. <laughs> I, I'm going to start small because, you know, we need a whole lot more. But if we could just have a hundred of you, this whole educational system would definitely turn around for the better. Um, Thank you so we, much here. I have, I have really enjoyed uh, sharing this time with you. I mean, this, this, this has just been tremendous. I, I want to let you know, of course, that the new, uh, the relaunching of the book is not available yet. But you can, um, you know, um, hit me up, as they say, on my website, uh, www.drdorothytravismore, and send me a note, and I'll make sure that you get it out, because it's going to be in all of the places, uh, Amazon.com, Bonds and Nobles, et cetera, 
uh, you can get in touch with me and I'll be happy to send you a copy. Um, but it is still a couple of months out before it is uh, before it will be ready um, and off the press. Okay, well, if any of our listening audience has any questions, you can feel free to put them in the chat and Dr. Travis Moore will be more than happy to answer all of your questions and concerns. So, uh, I'd like to ask, I, I would like to ask you this. What's next for you? in your educational journey. What what have you do you feel like you have done it all or there's more for you to do? And I'm talking about personally. Tell us a little bit about that. You know what people say even now that um that I operate at a high level of energy. Some of the um the young adults and the teachers that I come in contact with my, with me now go I mean, I don't know how you do it here. Is that I'm just exhausted. I'm just tired. Um, I'm on God's time. Let me give it to you that way. I'm on God's time. I enjoy being with children. I enjoy mm -hmm. uh, my writing. And I am hoping now I would like to share with others more. That is what I want to do more. I want to share with school districts. I want to share with um, church groups. I want to share with in individuals uh, who may have a struggling learner, tips and things like that. So now what I want to do is by the grace of God, what he has allowed me to experience, I want to impart it to groups or to individuals. And that's, that's where I am now. And then also you see that the pandemic is over or we are at least in this stage where we can travel more. Oh yes, I want to get back to traveling a lot more. So yeah, that's kind of where I am. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, actually, after you had after you had just decided to uh, leave Milwaukee, I just thought that you were just going to kick back and relax, and then the next thing I know, you're back in school. <laughs> Goodness. Is she going to rest or what? And but when you're passionate about something, it's really just hard to put it down. It really truly it is. And then um, also, you know what I want to say then to those, because there are many people out, you know, who said, look, I'm looking forward to retirement. <laughs> Don't tell me anything else. <laughs> uh, but you know what? But when you enjoy something and uh you can do that, I believe, with a certain level of ease. That's different. So I encourage people, you know, you want to get because retirement has its benefits. But then after retirement, you can make the decision to do what you have been doing mm -hmm. or to do something else. Uh, but education has been a part of me. So I have continued on this. And even now, like I said, I'm looking forward to just... Um, sharing my book more and more when it comes out that's my first kind of priority and then to just kind of uh, uh, travel so uh hey um you can do a lot of things by the grace of god and i am just saying now i will just continue and i do have time to relax i mean mm -hmm. some of the things i do are just like so mm -hmm. much fun it is not difficult it is so much fun so I would encourage people to like, you know, uh, as God uh, give you a maturity, enjoy life, enjoy life, relax, do and experience the things that God will allow you to experience. Well, that sounds wonderful for all the educators that may be watching. I encourage you to grab your copy of moving students from potential to performance. Yes. This yes. is a wonderful aid that will assist you. Please do. With just about every situation you may come across. This book is very, very 
thought provoking. And it gives you an opportunity to maybe even see some things that you may not have seen mm -hmm. and give you some insight on that as well. Um, so my next uh, question is, is there another book? <laughs> I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea, but maybe, <laughs> how about that? Maybe, and uh, that will be what God says it's to be about. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I I think there is another book in you. Okay. <laughs> I think of another several books, word books. I could go on and on and on because all the experience that you have obtained over 40 plus years yes, yes. cannot go into one book. It just cannot. It's impossible. And I'm for one looking forward to your next writing project. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. Well, we are about out of time. Where did it go? Oh my no, goodness. Well, well talking I and sharing like to do, thank do, but yes, thank you so much. Well, I would like to thank you for sharing your insight and your wisdom mm -hmm. to our wonderful viewers. And before we go, could you please tell us again where can we find you? on social media, and where can we purchase your book? You can go to uh, Facebook, and you can go to Dr. Dorothy Travis Moore. You can also go just to my webpage, www.drdorothytravismore, either one of those. And of course, if you want to email me, you can email me at dtravismore at yahoo.com. That's dtravismore at yahoo.com. Dot com. I look forward to it. Thank you very much. Okay, then. Well, let me say this again. Uh, if you'd like to purchase Dr. Moore's book, you could go to her website at Dr. Dorothy Moore, Travis Moore.com, and you could purchase it on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. And I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today on the Festival of Storytelling, uh, the Festival of Storytellers. I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. Um, this has been a, a, a honor and a, and a pleasure for me. And I thank you. You have provided us with so much information and your experience speaks volumes. And I wish you the absolute best in everything you do. And may God bless the center of your heart. Thank you very much, Nisi. I have enjoyed this. And thank you very much, Readers Magnet. As you say, you share our stories with the world. Thank you. <laughs>